As they say around here, keep Austin weird. They're going to keep it electric today inside Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, home to the Longhorns. We've got a top 25 matchup on hand. Two of the premier teams in the land looking to make a statement that will resonate. As we'll see the number 21 team in the country, the Florida Gators, taking on the third-ranked team in the land, the Texas Longhorns. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's tee this one up. The Gators will get us started with the opening kickoff. He thought about bringing that out for a half second, but he'll take a knee and they'll bring it to the 25. The Longhorns offense will take the first swing of the game. There he is, the man who makes everything go, and they believe they're going to score every time they touch it when he's on the field, Jesse. He plays with unbelievable confidence, Reese. Always knows where to go with the football. The entire playbook is at this guy's disposal. Yeah, which is so much fun for a coach, so much fun to play with him, a guy that can do everything. Everybody on the field is active in a weapon. Tackle is made at the 28 after a pickup of three. You know what I really like about games like this at this point in the season? You find out who you are. You find out whether you're going to stay in the race. And who can step up and handle the challenge, right? This is easily one of the toughest games to date for both of these programs coming into this one. So there's a lot of eyeballs, David, on this game to find out who's mentally and emotionally the toughest. Yeah, and we're going to point to this game as we get later in the year and big decisions are made. You've got a top 25 win. You beat them in the middle of the season, X, Y, and Z. So these are big for the resume. Curl route seems simple, but when you time it like that so it's right on him, man, that's a tough play to stop. And give the receiver a lot of credit, too, because he knew where the sticks were. He got his depth on the route, and then he came back to the football. All young receivers can learn from this guy right here. Come back to the ball and help your quarterback out. And those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. Caught in the backfield, it's Cook. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. And the Longhorns look to keep this drive humming. That is an excellent throw by the quarterback, finding the window between the zones and delivering that ball on time. He's got it on the right. Touchdown, Longhorns! And once he got loose, it was all over. You want to talk about a great way to start the game and set the tone early. It's so nice to have a quarterback just get himself into the game, get himself established. You make a couple throws, you lead your offense down the field, you score right off the bat. Could not have been a better start for that QB. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. So that was a six-play, 75-yard drive. And the capper coming on that 48-yard touchdown dart. On the run from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. So Florida's offense will try to get something started with their first possession. You know, yards figure to be hard to come by through the air, but some quarterbacks, Jesse, just love to go at the star corner. Yeah, and this guy's got confidence. He's not afraid to go at anybody, but he better be careful because this cornerback is one of the best in the nation. One of the best, no doubt. I think they will trust him on defense to make plays. So you got to make a decision. Is my guy good enough to beat him on the outside? I am fascinated by this matchup. You can barely hear yourself thinking here as they're trying to get this defense off to a good start. Back to throw. It's Mertz. Flips it out in the flat. At the 35, he's got room. 
And they'll spot it at the 38, and that'll be plenty for the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Well, it's a nice play design there. You're getting the running back involved in the pass game. Quarterback gives it to him early so he can go to work upfield and get the first down. And they'll bring him down after a short pickup. This offensive line better figure out a plan for this deep tackle. He is tough to block with one guy. You might want to start double-teaming him. He's going to be a problem moving forward. You saw all of his ability on that last play. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Got enough for the first down. Big play for this offense as they get it to the 32. This offense has a lot of different ways they can attack you, and you're going to see the entire playbook at work in this game. Throwing it, running it, and getting guys the ball out on the perimeter. Great job. They'll throw it on first down. Getting some heat. Hit hard just as he released it on first down and just couldn't get it to the receiver. He didn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of that one. The defense was all over him right after the snap. No wonder that thing fell. On second down, wants to throw. And the pass is incomplete thanks to a big hit. Well, the quarterback knew he wanted to go to his tight end on that play. He's a big physical target, but it was the hit on the play that forced the incompletion. They were really starting to put a drive together. But after a couple of incomplete... Fires deep toward the end zone. And that one's incomplete. They weren't just trying to move the chains. They were trying to move the scoreboard. Instead, it's fourth down. They'll leave the offense out there to try to get it past the marker and pick up the first. On fourth down, they're taking to the air. He's got it. Well, they just drained all the suspense out of the fourth down conversion, moving the chains easily. They needed a bunch on fourth down, and boy, did they get it. And I get aggressiveness. We get aggressiveness. We want to be aggressive, take shots down the field. First half, they felt like fourth and long. No big deal, and they get it. I imagine we'll get a few more of those. This offense trying to quieten the crowd on first and goal, and they are not cooperating. Looking to throw it again. Grabbed behind the line, it's Johnson. Oh, and he thought he had a chance to house him, but the defense tackles him at the three. Now second and goal, and right in the teeth of this noise. On the ground. Oof. He steps and powers and works his way. They finally get him down at the two. The best red zone offenses are the ones who can run the ball in this area, but that's a tough ask today, especially against this unit. One of the best five defenses in the nation stopping the run. This is a really big moment in this game. And he'll take it in. Touchdown, Florida! I tell you, when this drive started, the defense thought they had them in a hole. Not anymore. What a performance. And I really like the play calling by the offensive coordinator on that last drive. That was a nice mixture of running and throwing and getting different players involved. Really nice job. Very poised in that play calling, and it showed up with a touchdown. Getting set for the point after. Blitz the uprights. So a drive there of 85 yards and finish the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. After that latest answer, tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. Texas. And it'll be a touchback. The ball will come out to the 25-yard line. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. Now they need to put something together to answer that last score. There's a lot of pressure, too, on this offense to have to execute at a high level. They've got to score points, David, but they can't go too fast because their defense right now is tied. And I think that's the difficulty being a play caller. Like, I have to balance all of those things. My defense is a little bit tired. I can't put it on the field, but i got to be aggressive because this is a back-and-forth type game, so a lot to process and think about. 
That's a nice looking catch on that play. And I know Texas is known for DBs and they're known for having really good running backs. Not a lot of great receivers over the years. I'll tell you what, though, this guy has really showed up in this game. He's making plays. And I know they want to continue to build a legacy at this position here in this program. Wide receiver shows motion. They'll try the left side. Fakes his man out. And he'll run across the sidelines after the good game. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. Tough sliding in there. Picks up a couple, but still needs two more on fourth down. Now, they're going to send out the field goal unit, and that kicker will have to launch a rocket. No, it's a fake. He's running for it. They throw it in reverse, as that's the final play here in the first period. We played one, and we are right back where we started, all tied up after the first period as we take a look at the stats. They fought to a standstill in the first. Let's see if someone can get the edge in the second quarter. The Gators sending the offense back to work. And David, how they would love to stick it in the end zone one more time after that last drive. And once you get the defense on their heels and you back them off a little bit, you get in a little bit of rhythm, it's really hard to stop Jesse. And they're going to try to do it again right here. And if you're this play caller, you're loving what's happening right now because everything you dialed up on that last drive ended up working out. You're just looking at your play sheet. Everything you're picking is working. Let's see if they can pull it off again here. Makes it past the marker. The expressway is wide open. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. I love this type of play because it looks like a jet sweep. The defense, they're a bit confused pre-snap. They don't know who has the ball. And all of a sudden, that guy with his speed is in the second level of the defense before the defense even knows what happened. They get him down after he makes the catch. They were able to get the ball to the running back in space, but that space just evaporated. A great job by the defense, man. It's tough to get those guys on the ground. They're so used to being having the football as running backs and making plays and being dynamic. So usually one guy not going to get into the ground. You want many guys swarming to the football, trying to get that elusive guy on the ground. Really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal. Back to throw. It's Mertz. Takes the easy one to the back. Really strong job by the defense. A negative play on third down. They'll play it safe and try for three. What a disappointment. No good. After that failed field goal attempt, fellas, still tie ball game. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. Fast motion from the offense. From the shotgun, the handoff to the back. Stopped at the 25 after a five-yard gain. Listen, defense is about energy. It's about passion. It's about physicality. They need a little bit more of that. Get the guy in the ground. You can't let guys break tackles. What could have been set up in a long yard of situation now becomes an easier situation because you couldn't get him on the ground. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Coming to the line of scrimmage on third down. Wide receiver coming across in motion. They'll go to the ground. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. The Longhorns will bring the punt team onto the field. He's going to try to flip the field with this one. On the return, it's Abrams. He's brought down, but a really solid effort to pick up every bit of yardage he could on the punt return. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demoralizing. Yeah, and it can definitely be frustrating. And I think it leads you to say, maybe I go for it more. But, Jesse, I think this offense just needs to put another drive together and just finish strong. Yeah, and, and be a little bit less predictable, too, especially as they get closer and closer down to the end zone. 
He'll come out throwing on first down. Always a welcome play from the defense as they get a sack at the 47. And the defense there goes zone coverage, maybe confused the quarterback a little bit, forced him to hold on to the football, and that allowed the pass rush to get home. Try to get the edge with a quick touch pass. He's there to make the stop, and they threw it in reverse, losing yardage on that play. Well, I love the aggressive nature of the defense on that play. Everybody playing with eye discipline. They saw the pre-snap motion. They knew who had the football, and you saw guys play with excellent instinct, running downhill and making a tackle. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have squeezed it. Well, the quarterback and his intended target just simply didn't have the timing there. The ball falls incomplete on third, now setting up fourth down. On fourth down, looking for the completion. Touchdown, Gator! And they made it to the house where they found that six points waiting on him. And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. And I'll tell you what, heat that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Lining up for the PAT. And the PAT gives them a 14-7 lead. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? All right, guys, a little update on what else is happening in college football this weekend. USF fell behind early, and it's been an uphill climb since. The thing is, this is a program that's worked the portal about as well as anyone. These kids are tough and could just find a way. It's a tight one right now. They're trailing by only five to Navy. We'll circle back. If anything big happens, you should know about it. Thanks for the update on that one. Kevin, let us know when it goes final. Wide open downfield. And he was loose and not stopped until he gets to the 47-yard line. To throw, it's Ewers. Trying to get behind the defense. Oh, what a grab by the defense. Taking it the other way. The 40. Running inside the 20. And he's going to take it all the way back. Touchdown, Florida. Look, a lot of time left. There's a little bit of distance right now being put on the scoreboard. There is, but it's so awesome when you're a defense and you study all week about what's coming and what routes to be ready for, and then you jump the route and you make the plays and you just go get in that end zone. It is so beautiful. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. He'll bring it out. It's Cook. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. Getting late here in the first half, they'll have a chance to make this a one-possession game. And the offensive play caller here has to really be dialed in. It's important, down two possessions, Dave, but they're able to score some points, and you've got to call your best stuff in this two-minute situation. And, and such a good opportunity to come into a one-score game, create that momentum, get some good juices going for the second half, because obviously, you know, you built yourself a little bit of a deficit. You need some good things to happen, and it needs to happen on this possession. Tackled almost immediately. They're well short of the first down. Looking to throw at Ewers. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. Fires to the wideout. 
Pass on the way. It's picked off. And they'll close in on him after a good return on the interception. Really nice job there by the defense because I think they baited the QB into trying to fit that one in over the middle of the field. Remember, it's a big zone coverage. They've all got their eyes on him back there in the pocket, and they just let him feel like, maybe I can fit this football in. Not so fast. They come away with the pick. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They've been the height of efficiency here in the first half, David, and you've got to think they're going to try to click it right down the field here. When you're looking at your playbook and it's worked so well in the first half, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing, Palmer, because it's been all... And he's running in the open. Touchdown, Gators! And they'll put that scoreboard operator to work and put six on the board. They want to finish the season strong, and man, are they doing that here in this Week 11 performance. When that receiver got free, it was all over. And it's so nice to have a receiver like this as a quarterback because you pad my stats. I like those long touchdown passes where I just threw it really short, and he did the rest the of the work. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. That's the kind of drive everybody loves. So see, quarterback, one snap, put it in the end zone. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. Here comes the Texas offense. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their... And he throws another interception, his third one of the night. He was looking for a little more on that return, but he hands this offense a short field at the 35. Okay, so here comes the offense returning to the field. This has been an impressive first half, and Jesse did love nothing better than to tack another one on before the break. And why would they want to stop at this point? Everything they've dialed up, they've been able to execute throwing and running the football. And how critical is it for this defense to get a stop down right now? Perhaps they can create some momentum on their side by getting a stop before the half. Give to the running back. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. This offense has to get this guy the ball in as many ways as possible. He showed you all of his tools on that last play. Motion from the offense. Touch pass on the run. That run epitomizes a veteran, savvy senior who knows how to find space. They'll use a timeout right before halftime. Maybe time for one or two more plays. Dropping back, it's Mertz. Setting up the screen. That throw and catch gets them down to the six, and the defense is running out of answers. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. Just enough time for one final play in this half. Looking to pass on second down. And the quarterback can't get away, and down he goes. No time left on the clock. They passed on the field goal try, and they'll get nothing in life. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks, guys. Looks like we've got a superb matchup in Austin today. An entertaining first half, and we've got a multi-possession lead to break down thanks to the surgical precision of this offense. Might honestly take more time to talk about what didn't work than what did. The running game, the passing game, gadget plays have worked. Now it's just a matter of finishing the job. And with that, let's get it back to our fellas at DKR. The 
Longhorns will try to kick this one deep to get things underway in the second half. And he's going to try to return this one. That gamble did not pay off as they bring him down at the 12-yard line. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Looking for a productive play on first down. They'll come out on this drive and let it rip. Holds it in on the left. He's loose. Touchdown, Florida! And the stomping has commenced. Yeah, and that's simple, but it's not easy. It's a go route. Like, th th that receiver's streaking straight down the outside of the field. And my job as a quarterback is to put that ball up in the air, keep it away from the safety. He does just that. Receiver comes down with the catch. Nice pitch, nice catch, touchdown. PAT unit on the field. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. If only it were always this easy for the offensive coordinators. One play, big chunk yardage, put points on the board just like that. And he'll bring it out of the end zone. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. So now the Longhorns take over and they'll send out the offense. Well, the good news about this drive, Jesse, it can't go worse than last time through a pick on the first play. No, it certainly can't. I think one good way, David, to help your quarterback turn the page is just find him an easy completion here and let him get back into a rhythm. Yeah, or find him an easy handoff. Just hand the football off, maybe get the ground game going, maybe jumpstart this offense a little bit. And the pass is incomplete, charged loose by the hit. And you didn't have a lot of panic in the first half. Man, you're starting to get now in the second half, and this offense just has really, really struggled. Underperformed. You know you're a better team, but this offense hasn't shown it. This team hasn't shown it. It's the third quarter. They got to get it going now. Going to try to get it himself. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down. He tried to get it on his own. The Longhorns will line up to punt it away. There was just nowhere to go with the football for the quarterback throwing it. So he tried to create, he tried to extend the play with his legs, just not able to get away from the defense. And now we have fourth down. He turns like that or why you don't settle for the fair catch if you don't have to. Picks up just a little bit of yards to help out the O. Well, jet sweep pass. Plows through the defense. Offense gets set for second down. To the air, it's Mertz. And he intercepts it. Got room on the return. And he was finding space, and he took it all the way back to the 22. What a big game-changing play. I love when you see defensive players. They jump on the ball like they were the offensive guy. So aggressive. Going and getting that pick, creating some big mojo for your team. Pulls and fires complete. They make the stop right there. Good pickup, but still short of the first down. Operating in the red zone here on second down. Wide out in motion. The gift to the back. And he picked up the first down, but he will remember the price he paid after that hit. And the Longhorns trying to get a touchdown on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He pushes it forward all the way to the two-yard line. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that rock. Trying to slam in. And he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Texas! The offense did exactly what it's supposed to do with a start like that one. When you're set up with that field position, you're thinking touchdowns. You're not thinking field goals. It's exactly what the offense does. Takes advantage of great field position. Lining up to add another. The 
And the extra point is good. They still trail 35-14. And for a quick update, let's go to Kevin Connors in the studio. Boys, if it's happening in college football, we've got eyes on it. Check this out. USF fell behind early, and it's been an uphill climb since. The thing is, this is a program that's worked the portal about as well as any wolf. These kids are tough and could just find a way. They're trailing by just two to Navy. We'll circle back if anything changes in this exciting college football matchup. Oh, and how about that? I know Kevin and those guys will be keeping an eye on it for us. And he'll be forced out of bounds, but not before yet another big play in this passing attack. Well, offensively, they knew they were going to have some matchups they could take advantage of in this one. And all of a sudden, this quarterback has now over 300 yards passing in the game. Defensively, David, he has got them on their heels. And he's been showing you a little bit of everything. He can throw it all over the field to all different receivers, to his tight ends, to his running backs. Really has the ability to spread it around. And now over 300 yards. Still some time left, and he can put up even bigger numbers. And heck, go chase some awards, man. Get some postseason awards. Get an All-American. Just put up a day. Going to try to pop one on the screen. He's close to the first down, but they're going to mark him just a little short. They're facing a third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground. Just nowhere to go against this defense to find that single yard he needed on third down. Stopping the run is about physicality. It's about I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you up front. Really nice job by the defense. Showing their strength, bowing up, stuffing the run. Receiver on the move gets the touch pass. And the Gators have a first down. I just love the play call. You're getting a fast player out of the open field, and it's enough to get you a first down. Now it's first and 10 from the 46-yard line. He's looking to throw it. He'll off one deep down the left side. And it falls incomplete, and the offense is lucky to have it. Defender right there, almost had it in his grasp. Well, tip your hat to the defense getting that incompletion, because that hasn't happened often for this guy. Completed over 70% of his throws last week. He's doing it again in this game. Can the defense continue to mix things up, see if they can maybe confuse this QB? And it's knocked away downfield. The DB getting a hand in there. Man, that's a couple bad throws. Last possession obviously ends in an interception by this quarterback. And now you throw another one, you know, in harm's way. You got to make sure you're throwing to the open guy. Make sure you're taking care of that foot. And the pass. It's picked off. And they'll drag him down after a good return on the interception. And the senior just took that one out of the air and sent it the other way. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. The last time they had it, they took it down the field for a touchdown. They can build some confidence that they could go back-to-back -back scoring drives here. Yeah, and remember, it's not uncommon for offenses to find themselves as the game goes on. They had some things not go their way early, but they found something last drive, David. Let's see if they can build on that. Yeah, you, you, you just pick and pick and pick until you find that place where you're like, okay, this is an advantage I have. They clearly found that dude. They score here. We're in for a ball game. I got to be honest. I am shocked at just how well the defense has played in this game, especially stopping the run. We talked about statistically how they've struggled this season, but they have put the clamps down on this one, and they're just playing with a ton of intensity. And he's able to shed one tackle, but still, just a very short game. And this offense is desperate to keep this drive alive, trailing by multiple possessions, and it's getting late. Coming after it. He'll pull it down. And this one will be stopped for no gain. So they're going to send out the field goal unit to try a long one. He says he's got a big leg. He's going to have to show it from 56 yards out. From 56 yards out, what a power leg. Never a doubt about that one. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut them out there and let him stroke it through the uprights. He'll bring it out. It's Abrams. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. The Gators sending the offense back to work. That last drive was promising.
missing for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win it, David. They've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistake. Man, I don't think you get concerned with play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. Running back searching for a hole. Slams into the pile. He'll get one to the 17. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. And that shot downfield falls incomplete, and that's how we'll wrap up the third quarter. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Florida on top. Let's take a quick look at the national rankings to see how this playoff race is shaping up. As we start the fourth quarter, it'll take a pretty sizable comeback to win this one. The Gators send out the punt unit. Makes a move. He was working his way on the return for midfield. They'll stop him at the 46. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. Man, how comforting is it to know that even if your offense stalls out a little, Jesse, that field goal kicker can knock it in from a long way out. Well, he's one of the best in the country, Reese, no doubt. But this offense would like him and prefer for him to kick an extra point on this drive. And to do that, David, they've got to have more rhythm on offense. Yeah, create some more rhythm, create some more explosive plays, and maybe some more balance. And listen, it's nice to have that weapon and kick long field goals. You kick too many field goals, you don't get very many doubles. Well, they pick up the first against zone coverage. The biggest key there is the quarterback understanding that A, it's zone, but B, what kind of zone is it? Is it one high safety? Is it two high safeties? And then you know instinctively where your best throw, where your highest percentage completion is based on what type of zone coverage it's going to be. It. They'll snap this one from the 42. It's first and 10. Scanning the field, it's Ewers. Makes his connection. And he's able to shed one tackle and gets a pretty good pickup. And quarterback dropping back, understanding I'm getting zone coverage. All I got to do is be a little bit patient, manipulate that defense a little bit. My wide receiver runs that drag, and I get the first down. That last completion has him set up, second and short. They want to just keep throwing it. Snagged in the middle, it's Cook. And he was just a couple of steps away from taking that one even further after the catch. And the Longhorns are moving quickly down the field. Out of the gun, the inside handoff to the running back. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Quinn with the running game on first down, now back at it. He's looking for an open man on second down. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. Trying to pick up a first down. On the ground, it's Baxter. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Down by multiple possessions. They can't come up empty on this drive in the fourth quarter. They'll go for it on fourth down. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. Catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Longhorn. <laughs> On to attempt the try. And with the extra point, they now trail 35-24. They march 56 yards to the end zone. If they're going to pull off this big rally, they'll need to get this one back. They line up for the onside kick. And a few anxious moments, but the hands team is able to fall on it. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. 
After a punt on their last possession, they are set up in plus territory this time. And honestly, it wouldn't have mattered if they scored a touchdown their last possession. You've got to be able to turn the page and see this is a brand new opportunity to go get points. Yeah, and your defense has set you up for the position to get points right away. Now, let's get this offense back rolling again. Create some momentum. Just get a few first downs, and I'm in scoring position. the ground trying to pull the plug on this clock that's why they love to feed this senior running back he'll find those extra yards and I don't care if I get it by 2 by 20 by 30 by 40 I just I just want to get the first down understanding the situation understanding where the sticks are doesn't have to be sexy but I got to make sure I get to that stick get to the first down mark they're down to the 20 first and 10 They'll give it to him again. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. The defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Pass the first down marker and still running. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. Linebackers shuffling around, trying to keep the quarterback from getting a read. They'll be perfectly content to go right back to the ground here on second and eight. Guys, this is a really good win for this ball club as they put together consecutive victories. And in this season, that's what you got to do. You got to put together good weeks, build on each other, build that momentum, continue to grow as the season goes on. Yeah, David, it's all about building confidence. And it's really important for these players to go out, work hard in practice, and see that hard work really pay itself off on game day. This is a team that's really starting to believe in itself. That's going to do it for us from here for Jesse Palmer, David Pollock. I'm Reese Davis, and this has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.